You see, a few months ago, I hit my fifth year anniversary of staying in the same job that I started right after college. When I got the job offer of this job, I had told myself that I was gonna stay no more than three years. The idea was for me to jump from the office to office, from position to position, so that I can increase my pay, challenge myself and learn more, and be in a better position five years later. That didn't happen. I got stuck, I went back to school, and it was too convenient to leave, so five years later, there I was. And that there I was here was literally a year of applying every single week to jobs and getting no responses. I was getting more scheduled interviews right after college without any professional experience than I was getting after five professional experience of working in the field. Now the field that I'm in is essentially like admin work, a lot of like trainings and breaking down state law and a lot of just like analytical trainings and workshoppy stuff. Nothing too fancy, nothing too sellable and very niche and if you do not diversify your skill set, then you literally corner yourself and you can stay in one position forever. And I know people who work in my office that have been there for more than 15 years. Plus, I really, really needed a new job because inflation was increasing the prices of everything and our salaries was not moving. They did not give us an increase and every time you try to advocate for one, they tell you there's a budget freeze and no one gets anything. And on top of all of that, I was just getting bored of what I was doing. I had less, less enthusiasm about the trainings that I was leading, the workshops I was working on, or even the projects that we were planning in the office. I did not want to be there most of the days. And that's not a good feeling to have because that ends up influencing or uh, bleeding into your work and you end up not satisfying yourself or the people that you are working for, which are for me, were families in New York City because what we were doing is educating them on the science of reading or educating them on the ways and avenues that they can take to connect with the school so that they can shape or be part of the shaping of their child's educational experience. So it's a lot of soul and hard work, like it matters. It's a very valuable job position, but after doing it for five years, honestly, I was just bored and I wanted something more challenging. I just wanted something else. And during this time and for this reason and many other reasons, I decided to start a podcast. I started a podcast called uh, Hazawi, which means uh, in classical Arabic stories. And once I started it, I just started posting episode after episode, having conversations with writers and publishers and everybody who are in the creative writing space. Then one day I was having lunch in the cafeteria and someone from the marketing team comes up and he's talking to one of my colleagues. And you know, for some reason, my colleague told him, the media guy, that I just started a podcast because we just had spoken about it a few days ago. And he was like, oh really? We've been looking for someone who can run a podcast for our department. Would you like to apply to the position? I was astonished. I'm like, I've been applying for a whole year and I wasn't getting interviews and this just fell in my lap. I was like, yes, of course I will. I'm, I'm very, um, you know, I'm very excited about it. Let's talk about it. So he takes me to the podcast room. I didn't even know there was a podcast room in our building and it had all these fancy gears and microphones and cameras and chairs and everything that you would wish for if you were a podcaster. So we had a conversation that day about it. I told him what I can do. I showed him my work and he was satisfied. He said, yes, you will be the podcast producer let's get it done later that day he introduces me to the executive director of the office and we kick it and we liked each other and we're like we're gonna make this happen a few days ago I don't hear anything from them and I start getting worried so I, I text him and he doesn't respond and a day later I go to the podcast room that he took me a few days before and I talked to him and he said someone somewhere in the higher chain of command refused to hire for that position or refused to hire me for that position so I went back to square one. I thought this was the position that was gonna change my life. I thought that was the thing that I was gonna start doing full time, but it did not happen. So I went back to applying and not getting interviews. Then the executive director of my office found out about this whole situation and suggested that we start shooting videos for this particular program that we were launching uh, a few months later and just post it on our social media page. But then we found out that our office does not have a social media page, so she suggested that we create one. We create one, we shoot the video, I script it for her, we, I edit it, and we post it. 
and it gets like 300 views. And so we were like, whatever, it doesn't matter. So we just start posting more and more videos. And for six months, I would just work in my regular job and then work on top of it, posting videos over our office of all the diff different things that we were doing. Then one day, the executive director of my office created a position that has to do with social media, that has to do with creating videos, that has to do with us getting recognized more online. And I applied and I got it. Today, my job every day is to go in, shoot videos with my camera, edit videos, and then post them on social media. I can't believe that I'm getting paid to do a thing that I was doing it as a hobby just a year ago. I can't believe that I'm doing it as a thing that I started it out of get, being bored and wanting to create a platform for, for Muslim writers and it became a full-time job. Now I know, most of us right now, we're just addicted to the Instagram feeds where it tells you quit your nine to five and open up your own business and get rich and all that, you know, whatever. But I still, I, I feel so privileged and grateful to be doing what I'm doing right now full time. After a year of applying and not getting a single interview, not even a single one. And these not our jobs that were, you know, just called applying. These, some of them were through connections. And then getting this one, it just meant so much to me. And there are three lessons that I got from this overall experience. And by the way, I forgot to mention, this position does have a higher pay. So higher pay, doing more of the things that I was doing, and here are the three lessons. Number one, do not be afraid to do something new. You do not know what it will lead to. I literally learned how to podcast, how to edit videos, how to operate a camera, how to operate a light, how to operate a microphone from scratch. I knew nothing about how to edit videos, literally nothing. And I watched so many YouTube videos, just so many. You know, the mistakes that I remember, or not even the mistakes, but the struggles that I remember myself struggling with, you know, a year ago, I can't believe I used to struggle with them. You know, just finding a window that, you know, changes the loudness of the voice. It used to take me sometimes half an hour to find that window. Right now, I know the shortcut is shift seven or whatever the shortcut is. I can't remember it at the moment, but before it used to take me half an hour. Right now, it just takes me a click of a button. And all the agony of learning how to edit, how to ask questions, how to shoot videos, how to script, and how to do this whole thing led to the very moment that you know, I got the position that I have right now. Lesson number two, sometimes life does not happen the way we want it. We do not get positions we apply to, we do not get jobs we wish for, we do not receive salaries that we think we deserve, and that just part of life. It doesn't owe you anything in reality, but if we're honest, if we work and do our part, then in some form, we will be rewarded whatever, for whatever we put in. So the focus should be not the result or whatever we gain because we are not in control of the results, but the focus should be just on what we can do. Our actions, the day-to-day, -day, that will lead to the long-term impact. And lesson number three, and I think this is the most or the closest lesson to my heart and to me as a person, is be grateful for whatever situation you are in. And I know uh, there is a war going on and there is a bunch of atrocities that are happening and we cannot all say be grateful for whatever we have. But us, who live in very safe, safe places, countries, our homes are not being destroyed, there are no raining bullets and missiles that are on top of our heads and our life and the family and the people who we love are not in danger, we should be grateful for what we have. And that gratefulness should be an energy that feeds our soul and make us desire the less of more. And that allows us to appreciate the current state that we are in a little bit more. And in reality, if you look at it, even at the time before I, I had the position that I have right now, I was living in those five years what I wished for when I was in college. You know, when I was in college, my whole thing was to leave my family business because I used to work at a grocery store for a very long time. And my whole thing, if I can just exit that cycle of working at the store and have a full-time job of anything, it can be even, you know, cleaning bathrooms downtown Manhattan, I don't care. As long as not going back to the stores because I just hated working there, it will be a stepping stone or a foot in the door strategy for me to do something else. And I wished for it. And in the first three, four years, I enjoyed the hell out of it. And in that, in that last year where I wasn't enjoying what I was doing, even that, during that year, I still 
I could have have been a little bit more grateful and I was sometimes but the point of the matter is to remind ourselves is that we are living a time we are living in conditions that we once wished for and that's enough to carry us from a bad day to a better one. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And in the meantime, thank you for watching and until the next one.